Pulsar is back at it again, ending off the year with two new drops in the ever-evolving landscape of gaming peripherals. We have the Pulsar X Lite V3 and its advanced counterpart, the V3 ES, which both stand out as major contenders looking for a top spot to land in the hand of us gamers. So Pulsar has been updating and evolving their entire lineup of mice over the last year or so. So it just makes sense they would do the same when it comes to the ever so popular x Lite. Now they've upgraded the entire internals of these mice, adding their blue encoder, optical switches, as well as a 3395 sensor for peak performance. And this time around, they ditched the holes on the shell and they went for a full closed top and side shell design. Now the coating on these mice feel really good in hand. It actually feels the best out of all of their latest releases, in my opinion. Though both mice sport basically the same internal upgrades, the ES comes with a few more bells and whistles that really make it stand out amongst most mice on the market right now. The ES version comes shipped with its very own 4K dongle in the box, as well as a slightly thicker power cord cable for charging and wired use, as this ES can deliver up to 8K polling wired. Compared to the regular x Lite V3, which comes with your standard power cord and a 2.4Hz wireless receiver. Now, both mice can deliver up to 4K polling wireless, but you will still have to purchase a separate 4K dongle to pair with the regular x Lite V3, as well as use the official Pulsar software to control those functions on the standard V3. While the biggest upgrade on the ES being that there is no software needed on this mouse, as it's completely driverless. Beneath the mouse, you have your normal wireless switch and DPI button, but this time they added a Hertz button as well as a small OLED screen that will vibrantly deliver you all the information that you need. To switch your polling rate and DPI, go ahead and just press the dedicated buttons, but if you want to go ahead and turn on motion sync, simply hold down the Hertz button and press the left click to set. Holding down the Hertz button again and pressing the right click can set your preferred liftoff distance. And lastly, by holding down the Hertz button and clicking on the DPI button, you could set your to bounce time settings. It's all pretty straightforward and intuitive. I really love that I don't need anything to download, I could just change things on the fly super quickly. Now, I expect people's biggest concern to be battery life on these mice, especially on the ES having an actual screen located on the bottom. A Pulsar states the regular x Lite V3 has a 100-hour battery life, give or take, while the new ES has a 500 milliamp battery for 70 to 100 hours of use. Now, battery life really all comes down to user and how much you're going to be using the mice, especially if you're pairing it with the 4K dongle or not. Um, but the more that you do use a dongle, you will notice a slight decline in battery life of all their mice. But... It's not detrimental, and so far, the hours they're seeing these mice can last for has been very accurate. Now, I don't know where the battery is exactly located in this new ES version. I believe it's located towards the bottom of the mouse, uh, but that I believe that really helps with the weight distribution of the mouse because they do stay it's pretty well balanced, and it really is, uh, and you definitely notice it in hand. Yes, this is a heavier mouse, but it's a more well-balanced weight, uh, and you do feel that in-game. The scroll wheel on the regular V3 feels good, no issues, no misclicks, it's centered and performs well. The ES version though sports an aluminum alloy scroll wheel. Now when I first heard this, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little skeptical. I assumed this wheel would just end up feeling heavy and clunky, but I was dead wrong. This wheel feels great. It has good grip, smooth rotations, and it's not heavy like you would expect it to be from the looks of it. It just feels super premium in hand. No double or misclicks, and it's kind of like a luxury scroll wheel. You didn't need it, but now you kind of want it, and I think Pulsar nailed it. Now the optical switches feel and perform great as well on both mice, and the clicks on the ES though just sound a tad bit deeper due to the entirely enclosed underside. Now, when it comes to all of the mouse clicking here, if you've been a fan of the optical switches that Pulsar has been dropping in their mice recently, you're not going to have any issues with these mice at all. Now, I will say uh, all the clicks feel really good on these mice. They're not stiff on either of the mouse, but I will tell you on my fourth button here on the ES version, for some reason, I have a slight bit more pre-travel here. That could just be my unit, though. It hasn't been detrimental in game for me, but it is definitely noticeable when I click mouse four compared to mouse four on the regular V3. Again, not a huge deal, uh, and all the clicks on both of these mice just overall feel really good. Both of these mice fall into the medium category, but they both lean towards the larger end, catering specifically for palm grip users. Now, the mouse shells are nearly identical in size, with the ES being slightly wider, though the difference isn't noticeable. However, the weight distinction is more noticeable as the regular V3 is significantly lighter, coming in at around 55 grams, compared to the ES, which weighs in at around 65 grams. 
So if you're in the market for an overall just lighter gaming mouse, well, the ES might not be the ideal choice for you. The ES sports a small red line on the lower back side of the shell, but I would say it's more of a maroon and doesn't exactly match the color of their super logo on my glass pad. But that's just me having OCD and nitpicking. Now the ES is only sold in this one colorway as of right now, while the regular X Lite V3 is sold in both black and white. Gaming on both of these mice feel really good. They are more than comfortable in hand as the mouse shell, just like the original X Lite, maintains its generous size, offering you a fuller and more hand-filling experience that is tailored for players who really appreciate the comfort of palm grip. Sporting all of Pulsar's latest internal upgrades with the option of higher polling rates really propel your gaming experience further. Now, I've been using so many lightweight mice lately that it just felt refreshing to have a heavier mouse in hand. Now, the big question is, which one do I think people out there would prefer? Well, if you're okay with the heavier mouse, it's the ES all day, as this entire mouse just has a more premium outlook. The aluminum wheel not only looks great, it feels great as well. Having a driverless mouse with the option for 8K polling is just phenomenal for users with those higher refresh rate monitors. But if you really don't care about polling rate, which trust me, I understand, then you really have no need to spend the extra cash and you can just grab yourself the lighter of the two mice, as both still have that same great finish coating, durable shell design, optical switches and top of the line sensor. So how much do these mice cost? Well, the regular x -Lite V3 will run you just about $100, while the x -Lite V3 ES will run you about $130. Now the price difference isn't too bad since the ES already comes with a 4K dongle. Well, if you opt in for buying the 4K dongle on the regular x -Lite, it will run you an additional $20, making it just about a $10 difference between the two mice. Like always, you guys could find all links to everything we spoke about today down below in the video description if you want to check out any of these two X Lite V3s. So that is my review of the Polestar X Lite V3 and the V3 ES. Between both mice, if you're going to pick up any, which one would you choose? I'm really curious to hear your opinion. Now, obviously, Polestar has been crushing it this year, and I really hope to see them continue doing this next year because uh, all the products they've released recently have just been really well done, and Polestar is listening to its fan base. They just, they just keep delivering, which I love. So if you guys are new here, please do me a favor, consider hitting the subscribe button as I want to grow this channel bigger and better, and I can do that with the help of you guys. If you liked the video, smash the like button, maybe share it with a friend, and most importantly, you guys stay safe out there. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.